Right guys, welcome back. This is just a quick short video. Um, I'm going to try and stick to doing this uh, where I'll collect a few comments up and answer them in video format as well as obviously respond to them anyway. So this is regarding a few questions with the cranks um, and the video that I did yesterday. One of them was, is the bolt pattern the same between the M111 and the OM601 crank. Yes, they are. They're identical. Um, and that goes for the M104 and OM606, OM605, um, and a few more. They pretty much kept this universal bolt pattern. So, just to highlight this, that's the M111 flex plate on the OM601 crank. Everything lines up perfectly. So, that means Sprinter parts will fit on a M111 crank. Now, the reason for this question was that it's an engine going in a kit car and wanted to mate it to a uh, six-speed transmission. The thing that Casey of Boostworks rightly pointed out is that I've, I've mentioned Diesel Pump UK in yesterday's video, um, and Diesel Pump UK actually do a budget solid mass flywheel kit for the OM601, which means it does also fit the M111 as well. Same bow housing, same bolt patterns. It comes with the uh, flywheel, clutch, uh, slave cylinder, I think that's it. It's only rated to about 275 horsepower, but if you change the friction plate, then you should be able to get far more out of it. Now, thank you, Casey, for uh, pointing that out. Um, go check out Casey's channel as well, Boostworks. We sort of go between each other's channels um, and try and help each other out. So, yes, these are interchangeable. Everything from the M111 will interchange to the OM601 on the flywheel side of things. The next question was, and somebody mentioned that the um, Conrod journals are slightly wider on the diesel, which is absolutely right. They are 0.1 of a mil wider. Um, not a massive amount, but enough. Um, when you're working with cranks, bearings, oil tolerances, all those fun things, um, 0.1 mil is a reasonable difference. Um, now, you'd have to bear that in mind when working with your crank if you went down this route. Um, this is a reground crank, so I can't modify any more than it's been done. So basically what I'll have to do is get a remachined crank because the bearings for the BMW engine are a lot different. They're nearly to, I think they're 1.7 millimeters thinner. Um, so I'll show you that now. So if you can see just there, the, how much thinner this bearing shell is compared to this one. So this is your M111 one, and this is the BMW S14 one. Now, there is a way to sort that, and this is pretty much only a test mule crank anyway. Um, it's been shut out of an engine for far too long, and could do with polishing again. Now, because this has been reground, I can't do anything with this. So what I need is an unmachined crank, standard crank, that I can have the Conrad journals machined to the tolerances that I need to account for the thinner bearings. It is possible. Um, the thing with the M111 is it's a rod guided piston. Some engines have a piston guarded rod and the pistons are designed as such. These pistons are not designed to guide the rod, so it wouldn't work. And so I have to make sure that the crank will guide the rod true and we're not going to end up with any funny movement like that. Um, this is just for the sake of it. Um, 
Like, none of this is set in stone. If there comes a point where it will just be more financially viable to just do it the right way, rather than mix and matching up all sorts of different parts, then that's the route I'll go down. But I wanna try this out first um, without investing too much money in it. Um, so the other question was, could an M111 rev to 7,000 um, with uh, valve springs? And yes, uh, with dual valve springs, an M111 could rev that high quite happily. The other thing to consider is when you're revving that high, you could really do with a lightened and balanced rotating assembly. Like rotating assembly is balanced, but it's a lot of weight on one of these cranks being thrown around in there. And the M111 has no balance shafts whatsoever. Um, so it's it would be not ideal um, to not do anything with the crank, but the engine with valve springs and retainers could rev to 7,000. However, once you're up in that rev range, you will start to run into other issues like the flow of the head. Um, you will be restricted by your cam profile and just the port size and the way everything's set up, in, especially in the uh, pre-Evo head. So the post facelift Evo head is a better design and that would be far more beneficial to do it to one of them engines um, because the head design is just better and I think they've got sodium filled valves, lightened crank, don't quote me on that. The engine block is strengthened um, so for revving out you are better with a Evo M111 rather than the pre facelift M111. So that said, that just covers um, a little bit about the questions I've had and I'll try and stick to doing this. Um, I'm trying to keep it short. We don't need long videos at the minute with this in between stuff going on because this is a period where I'm just trying to work things out as I go along and do my own homework as well. Um, so that said, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one. I hope this helped.